It's the Flow Friday Sports Show, and we're talking all about the end of Sunraysia Netball for another season. We've just had a big weekend of grand finals, and joining me is the head Kanga from the Oyun United Kangas. She's an A-grade player, and she played in the grand final for Oyun United on the weekend. It's Caitlin Vine, our regular correspondent. Good to be with you, Caitlin. How are you feeling? Exhausted, if I'm honest. Uh, it's quite the weekend. Yes, I'm sure it was. And uh, obviously, commiserations for the result, Caitlin. But uh, as you said off air, you made it this far. And uh, I guess you have to look at it from that sort of lens, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's so much that, uh, so many positives that have, we've come away with from the weekend. Uh, it was truly uh, an incredible game uh, and an incredible club effort. So. Yeah, lots of highs and lows throughout the day and throughout the weekend, but we come away uh, feeling a uh, bittersweet and I think still so many positives to take away from it. Wentworth, the A-grade champions. We've got B and C-grade champions too. We'll start with C-grade. So just fill us in on what went on here, Caitlin. Yeah, so the C-grade was South Muldura versus Wentworth. So obviously uh, Wentworth had quite a few teams in, in a lot of the grades for the day. South Muldura are really strong in that C grade and they worked hard to get there. Uh, they had some really tough games throughout finals to get there. So the final result was South Muldura 32 to Wentworth 30. So a really close game. It was a fantastic game to watch. Uh, really got the crowd up and, and ready for the A grade. Uh, and, yeah, just a fantastic effort by the South girls. They had a mixed team. Um, they had some experience uh, within their team, but also some young ones coming up. So uh, congratulations to South Muldura. Oh, Rimple really flying the flag in the B grade for their town. Uh, a big, big, big win for them, Caitlin. Yeah, this is probably a little bit of an upset, really. Uh, as I said throughout the year, we originally played I Rimple, um and beat them quite comfortably. And then when we met them in the uh, first semi-final, they were a completely different team, uh, and they ended up beating us by a few goals. So um, Irimple were probably underdogs going into the final series, and Robinvale, having only lost, I think, one or two games for the season, it had been so, so strong. Uh, We watched this game. It was a very, very close game. Uh, Some fantastic netball, but I think the indoor atmosphere made it a little bit more difficult for Robin Bell to score with their really tall shooter. Uh, so that probably didn't didn't work in their favour as much as it usually would. And in saying that, I Rimple's goalkeeper uh, is under 17. She also played in the 17s grand final and then played an absolute blinder I Rimple in the B grade and probably was one of the main reasons that they won. So the final score was I Rimple 34 to Robin Bell 32. So, again, a very, very close grand final. And a big congratulations to Arimple. Can you just tell us, there might be a few of our listeners who are listening wondering how there's such a discrepancy, well, seemingly a discrepancy in sort of quality between Robinvale's Bs and As. I mean, how do they sort of produce such a strong B-grade side and then an A-grade side that's uh, at the foot of the table? Do you have any, uh, any scope on why that might be, Caitlin? I think uh, a lot of clubs probably mix and match throughout the season based on who they know they can they can uh, probably succeed in. Um, you know, not to say that the, the B graders are any better than the A graders. They probably put up a, a strong fight as well. But I think sometimes you just have players who you know are strong B grade players. And so um, they probably cement themselves in that, in that class. I also know... Um, some of the stars for Robin Bale in Jane Aikman, you know, she's uh, probably a, more of a veteran of the game and she could easily play A grade but probably doesn't want to and probably enjoys playing B grade that little bit more. Um, and I know that we've got players in our club who are probably the same who could easily play at the top level but have done that for quite a long time and just want to relax and, and play a grade or two below. So it's not that it's unfair. I mean, they still put on quite a contest and they probably... Um, are those good mentors for the younger teams, uh, younger players coming up? But sometimes that's just the way that you work your team. Um, yeah, and as we said, like we we only beat uh, Robin Bell's A grade by I think six. Um, so they definitely got stronger as the year went on. They just couldn't quite get that win. So it is a bit interesting, I guess, that Robin Bell um, did have such, such a strong team there. But 
I mean, other teams throughout the season have probably had similar. I think the B grade for Irimple probably after their A grade had a, a shock loss with uh, Cherie going out with her ankle. They probably thought, well, let's see what we can do with our B grade now to try and keep them strong for finals. So it's all a lot of tactics and a lot of moving around. Uh, and sometimes it just, yeah, that's just the way it works out. Fair enough indeed. Caitlin, we'll look at your game. So the A-grade final, uh, obviously your side own United Kangas coming up against Wentworth. Now, I remember back uh, a number of weeks ago, you sort of uh, made a comment which was uh, to the effect of, you know, Wentworth are, are going to be pretty hard to get. Um, so going into this game, did that sort of give you the license to play with the shackles off? Was it a defence first mentality going in or a... Uh, more of a sort of uh, the best form of defence is attack and let's just go out there and see what happens? Honestly, uh, I think going into it, uh, we were our mentality was we have nothing to lose. You know, we came from having such a, a mixed match season with never having the same team. We had, you know, something like 18 players come through our team. Uh, we were just happy to be there. And then as the season progressed, we managed to sort of, work our way up the ladder and finishing in third position, having not beaten Muldura or Wentworth, we sort of, you know, had faith in ourselves, but we didn't feel like we had that expectation that perhaps Wentworth had, having been undefeated for the year. So um, we honestly went in there with no expectations, knowing our worth that, you know, we can be good enough and, and that we would be good enough on the day. We were really relaxed going into our warm-up um, and relaxed you know, sort of before the game, despite the incredible atmosphere that was, you know, a thousand people stacked into a stadium. And as soon as that whistle went, it was just, it was just game on. So, um, yeah, we, we definitely showed our, how relaxed we were, I think, in those first few minutes. Uh, we worked really hard to, to get a bit of a lead. And I think um, that lead changed well and truly throughout the day, uh, Wentworth, getting up by, I think, three goals at one stage and us being up by four goals at one stage. So um, I think you could see throughout the game uh, that our game did change as we realised that we actually might have this. We actually could win. Um, And that was evident when uh, at the quarter time break when our coaches um, and our leaders in Kat and Sean went from being like, well done, keep going, you're doing really well, to come on, we can do this, you need to do this, push harder, push harder, push harder. Uh, And that was really evident in the girls' game. Uh, We just pushed harder and harder every quarter and there was absolutely nothing left in that tank when that final siren went. I'm sure that's the case, Caitlin, and um, a fantastic effort nonetheless. Congratulations to Wentworth. That's uh, the curtains falling down on the A-grade uh, netball season in Sunraysia. Just tell us from a Owen United perspective, going forward now, you're obviously going to have an eye towards uh, how to go one further in 2023. But between now and then, a few sort of, uh, you know, down down low sort of uh, low key social events planned at all with the girls? Uh, I think we've well and truly had our social gatherings for a little while. Uh, I mean, you know, losing by one goal uh, on the siren, having that opportunity to make it even and go into extra time made that loss probably all the more difficult. Um, but, you know, to to be in that position in the first place, we really felt like winners. So um, it was a Saturday, Sunday, Monday kind of situation and we certainly made the most of it, Um, not only with the A-grade team, but the B squad and all of the netball football clubs. So we've had probably had our fair share of of social events and uh, for now and we will have a netball trip and a couple of other things throughout the off-season. But just, yeah, letting everyone relax and wind down now saying goodbye to the 2022 season and working our way into the 2023 season. Well, it's a sad time, Caitlin Vine, because we'll have to close the book for another year. It's been so good having you on the airwaves. We've really enjoyed getting your insights every week. You're clearly very passionate about your sport and your club, and we thank you so much for everything. Enjoy not having to worry about those Saturday afternoon preparations for a good few months, and we'll see you next year. Thank you so much. Go Kangas.